Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial number 15 about FreeCAD CFDOF in English. In this tutorial I will show you how to perform a heat transfer simulation. On the left side you see a picture taken from Wikipedia showing the heat transfer from a house into the air. On the right side you will see the simulation result. Let's take a look uh, what solvers are available. For open foam, the following solvers are available. We have the Laplacian foam. This is used for solid. It is a simple heat conduction equation according to Fourier's, Fourier's law, law. This solver is not supported by CFDOF. So the both um, solvers that are supported by um, CFDOF is the Bouillon Simple Foam and the Bouillon Pimple Foam. The Bouillon Simple Foam is used for steady simulation and the Bouillon Pimple Foam is used for transient simulation. There is a, um, another solver um, with the extension to Businek. This is used for incompressible medium. Um, this solver is not supported by CFDOF. And the last two solvers is a CHT multi-region simple foam and the CHT multi-region foam. Um, they can be used for steady simulation and for transient simulation. The medium is compressible. These solvers are used for conjugate heat transfer. This means you can simulate the heat transfer inside a solid and also the transfer from the solid into the heat, into the medium. Um, this solver is not supported by CFDOF and currently it is not possible to edit uh, some kind of files or something to make it work. I hope that in the future this simulation will work, but currently it does not work. So let's take on the look on our simulation. For our simulation, we will use the Bouillon Pimple Foam Solver. For simulation of the heat transfer with open form, the transient simulation is always recommended. Um, in the next step, we will take a look from the transfer from the wall into the air. The transfer from the wall into the air is turbulent. Uh, in order to be able to simulate these turbulences, an extremely fine mesh would be, have to be used. This is not possible on normal computers. For this reason, in open form, wall functions are used. A possible wall function is the Yaya Teleke model. This is show how to use. Currently, this model is not supported by CFDOF. Um, a second possibility for the wall function, this is a heat transfer coefficient alpha t. Values for alpha t are given in the table below. Um, you see it, it is depending on the case, it is depending on the medium and so on. And um, for our simulation, we will use a value of 20 for alpha t. So this is how our simulation model looks like. We have a height of 80 millimeters and a width of 100 millimeters. Um, on the downside, we will have a, something, a double T shape. Um, this is um, where the heat is generated and from where the heat will be transferred. And um, this wall has a temperature of 393 Kelvin and a temperature of 20 degrees. Okay, let's start with FreeCAD. We start with a new file. We start with the part design workbench. Um, we make a new sketch. And we go to the polyline. Um, we start here, move to the right down a bit 
go down to the line, go to the left, go up a bit, go to the right, go up a bit, go to the left, go up, go to the right, go up, and now change the sides, go to the left, go down, go to the right, go down, go to the left, go down, go to the right, and go down, and follow the, the line, and we go up and close. Okay, that looks good. Um, now there are too many constraints. We will remove this constraint and we will remove this uh, constraint. And now it is white. Um, so everything more is more or less okay. We can make this a bit smaller. Um, now we define here the height. The height is um, 80 millimeters. And this, we will set this to parallel, um, no. We will re remove this constraint um, indicating that it is, um, uh, yes. So we will define here a symmetrical um, boundary condition. Okay, that's fine. Um, here we will define the length. The, the width will be 100 millimeters, that's okay. Okay, now we um, say that that this part and this part, that they are equal. And we say that this part and this part is equal. And we say that this part and this part is equal. And here we define a symmetrical boundary condition. We have to remove this constraint. Um, Now we can define a symmetrical boundary condition. So that's okay. And we define that, that this part and this part is equal. And we define that this part and this part is equal and we define that this and this part is equal so that looks good okay we define that um, this part and this part is equal and we define that this part and this part is equal okay and we define that this part and this part is equal. So that looks very good. So here we can define the height. So height is uh, 25 millimeters. And we can define the width, that's 40 millimeters. So that looks good. Um, finally, we have to define this length. This length is 50 millimeters. Okay, there's some, there's some constraint missing. So we say that, um, that this is equal to, to this part. And we say that this part and 
this part are equal. This point and, and this point was not connected for what reason ever. Now, um, our model is fully constrained and we can close. We can now patch this up to 10 millimeters. So now our model is complete. We save this file. Our model is complete. We can now start the CFD OE workbench. We insert a simulation container. So that looks good. Um, now we can define the physics model. We will have a transient simulation. And um, we unclick the isothermal flow. It is viscous, that's OK. Um, here we will, for the turbulence, we will use the laminar model, that's OK. But of, of course, the other models, uh, RANS and large eddy simulation and so on, they are also feasible. So that's OK. We click on OK. The next point is uh, are the fluid properties. We will use air, that's OK. Um, for the initialized fields, we make a double click. Um, for the velocity, we will define a ve velocity in y direction, in, in y direction. This will be 0 0.1 millimeters. So that's OK. Um, so for the for the pressure, we will use uh, 100 kilopascal, that's OK. And the temperature, 293 degrees, that's also OK. We click on OK. Um, next, we have to define some boundary conditions. Um, we will start with the with top side. We click on this side. And this will be our outlet. So here uh, we will define a static pressure of 100 kilopascal. Temperature is 293 degrees. That's OK. We click on OK. So next uh, boundary conditions are the is the, is the right side. And this will be the, the boundary open. Membrane pressure, that's OK. Uh, temperature pressure, that's OK. But we also must define this for the, for the left side. We click on OK. And now that's finished. We click on OK. That's finished. Um, from the upper side, we can here define a boundary condition as well. So here, this is um, wall, no slip. That's OK. And uh, temperature 293 degrees. That's also OK. We click on OK. So now it's time to define the boundary conditions for the for the double T. We click on this wall, we click on this wall, we click on this wall. Now we can start. This is also wall, no slips, that's okay. Um, here the the thermal boundary condition is not fixed temperature, but it is um, heat transfer co coefficient. Um, the heat transfer coefficient will be 20. And the uh, temperature is 393. Now we've clicked some of the walls, but uh, did not get all of the walls. So we will join.
we will click this as well. We will click this one. And now we will click the, the, the downsides. We click on add. And I hope that I got everything. So I click on OK. And now I make the pad invisible. Oh, OK, I forgot. I forgot these sides. Um, I will add them. I make a double click again and I select this face. I click on add. I rotate here. I click this one, click on add. And now it should be okay. So we will remain um, this label. Here's wall with, we say heat, heat source. So that's okay. Um, now in the next step, we have to go to the, to the mesh. We click on the, on the pad, go here to the, to the CFD mesh. Um, the measure that we will use is a G mesh, tetrahedral. Um, base element size is five, five millimeters. So now that's okay. We can close. Um, now we have to make some mesh refinements. Uh, we click on the pad mesh and click on the mesh refinement. So the first uh, refinement that we have to define is that we have a two-dimensional mesh, means that uh, we have an extrusion to the planar mesh, thickness one millimeter, that looks fine. And now we have to select uh, the top face. We click on this one, add, and say, okay. Um, and the next thing that we want to have is a refinement um, in the area of this double T. So we will click again on the, on the pad mesh and define the necessary refinement. Um, this refinement will also be the double T. So here we click on the, on this side. So let's rotate a bit. Now we can click at these sides. And now we have to um, select these faces. Okay, that looks good. Um, the relative element size, in this case, we will use 0 0.25. We click on OK. And now we, what we will do is uh, check if we have the, um, if we have selected all necessary faces. We will, yes, but here you can see that, um, yes, we have selected all faces. That looks good. Um, if I want to make something visible or invisible, I click with the, with the cursor on it and then press the space bar. So this is quite useful. So now we can start to mesh. We click on pad mesh. Again, we save right case. That's good. And now we can start the measure. Okay, the measure has finished. Um, we can now ref 
review the, the mesh. We can say load surface mesh. The mesh looks very good, looks fine. In the last step, we will press the check mesh. This is useful, so you see that um, if there are distorted elements or something like that, you will get a warning. So after 24 seconds, the uh, mesh checker has finished. Um, the mesh is OK. So everything is OK. We can click on Close. We can now save the file. Um, we can now click on the CFD solver one time. And here we see the properties of the solvers. Um, in this case, we want to have a transient simulation. Um, and normally, the end time of the simulation would be one second, but we will increase this to 10 seconds. OK. Um, the transient write interval, that's OK. That's 0 0.1. This is an interval where the pictures are written for the for Paraview. So if you make this shorter, then you will get more pictures for Paraviews. If you make this larger, then you get less pictures for Paraview, but um, 0 0.1 seconds, that's OK. So we have this defined the properties for the CFD solver. We can make a double click. We click on Write. Um, and now we can start the simulation. The simulation will last about 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So see you in the time. Now the simulation has finished. Um, you see from the residuals that they are in a normal range. So we have a transient simulation um, that looks OK. Now we can start Paraview and review the results. So we go to the first time step. And the first thing that we want to take a look on is the speed. Um, we can now see that um, during the simulation, during the simulation time, the speed is increasing. Um, we have here the maximum for the for the speed. We can see that there is a flow coming from the double T. Um, it is going to the to the outlet. So that looks okay. So in the next step, we can um, take a look how the flow is running. We can um, go to the steam tracer. Um, we will now uh, reduce the resolution to 200. That should be sufficient. Um, we click on Apply. OK, that's, uh, so here the steam tracer is running from here to that. That's, but in this case, that's OK. We can, so this is the start. You see that here um, we have some kind of turbulence. We have some kind of vertices. Um, so that's OK. You can see the, from where the um, flow is coming. That's OK. We stop here and um, delete the steam tracer. We have additional values. So the, the other point is we can take a look on the, on the temperature. So here we see that um, uh, here we have defined the temperature of 373 degrees. Um, you can see that in this area we have the hottest areas, and um, the the heat is distributing to the to the outlet, and that's okay. Now let's come to the, to the conclusion. Heat transfer can be simulated with bouillon pimple foam. For this simulation, editing of the files is not necessary. All functions are supported by CFDOF. In order to consider the turbulent flow on the wall, a wall function is required. A transient simulation is recommended. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you in the next video tutorial. Bye-bye.